I'm going to give you five things to think about before you even touch your paintbrush when it comes to miniatures. We're starting right now. What is going on guys? My name's Jarrett. Welcome to Mini Junkie. If this is your first time here and you're interested in the hobby of painting miniatures for board games and war games, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So I've been trying to paint the new Ideneth Deepkin models that just came out from Games Workshop for Age of Sigmar. They're awesome. I, they're gorgeous models. I am extremely excited to paint these models. But there's a good reason why I haven't started yet. And it's because I haven't been able to answer five probably more, but five key questions before I've been able to get to the project itself. You can see it on this guy here because he's primed, primed white. I haven't put any paint on him yet. I haven't based him yet. And there's a reason again for that. Probably the very first thing you got to ask yourself, number one is, is this piece or are these models for gaming or for display? The reason that's important to ask yourself is that sets the context for a whole lot of other things you're going to do with the project. If it's for display, you're probably going to put in a lot of effort. You're going to need to block out how much time it's going to take you to paint this. If it's for a customer, for example, maybe you're on a deadline or for a contest, the same thing. If it's for gaming, you have more time. But again, are you going for like three colors and a shade or are you going for something that looks really awesome even if it is for gaming? And once you know this is an army, this is for gaming, this is how I want it to turn out, then you get to number two and you ask yourself, what kind of color scheme am I going to use on these guys or girls? That is one of the questions I'm having trouble answering with the Ideneth Deepkin, Deep, Ideneth Deepkin models. I keep going back and forth. Should I be using dark armor, light armor, dark cloth, light cloth? How am I going to do, you know, paint the different types of robes and things like that? How am I going to create contrast? Find the nicer a model is, the more likely you are to get stuck on this step because you really want to do it justice. Depending on how long you've been painting, what kind of tools you have access to, and if you have an airbrush, the choice of color scheme can dictate how difficult this project's going to be for you. If you're not used to painting yellow and you're about to paint an Imperial Fist army and you don't have an airbrush, you may be in for a hard time. Or if you're going to paint Necrons and you're going to go with a lead belcher spray and a wash, it's going to be a bit of a walk in the park. Other specific things to ask yourself about the color scheme are, will you enjoy painting it? Are you going to find that to be a pleasurable experience. If you hate painting green and you're about to dive into salamanders, again, you may not enjoy yourself and the project may just go off the rails on you or you may lose interest. How are you going to do vehicles? You know, like, is the color scheme going to look good on tanks? Is it going to look good on bikes or aircraft or whatever it is you're painting? You know, if you're going to be doing a certain kind of color on your troops, how are you going to translate to your vehicles? Is it going to look as good on vehicles as it does on the troops? Just those kind of things are things to keep in mind. For example, Ideneth Deepkin, as I think about the troops and I think about the HQ, I'm also thinking about the mounts that they ride, the creatures, the giant turtles, and the giant sea ray monster thingies. That's to let you know where my head's at with that as I think about the project. I've been, I've ordered um, like a color shift paint from Green Stuff World and I'm thinking that that would look really cool as like sort of like the scales on some of the sea creatures, sort of an iridescent look. And then I also think when it comes to the armor on the troops, maybe rather than just a silver or a, you know, a gunmetal color, I may go for like a metallic blue, a metallic green, or a bit of both. So let's say you got your color scheme figured out. How are you going to base these puppies? Don't neglect the base. Even on a very quick and easy project, the base is an important part of your miniature. It's an important part of creating a, a cohesive and a, attractive and appealing look for the models. Think of the base as the frame. The model is your, your painting, right? The base is the frame. You don't have to go crazy. It can be sand glued to the base and paint it, paint sand if you, it doesn't look right if you don't. But anyway, it can be just sand. It can be like a texture paste. It can be all kinds of different things, water effects, but you got to do something. And obviously the amount of effort you're going to put in depends on your answer to question number one, which was, is this for gaming or is this a display or contest entry? And your choice of how you're going to base this is often going to be dictated or driven by your answer to the last question about your color scheme. I'm stuck on my Ideneth Deepkin. Part of why I haven't started painting them or him or any of them is I'm not 100% sure how I want to base these guys. You know, they got that sort of ethereal sea, ocean, not quite in the water, but they're on land thing going on. 
So you could, you know, based on the fluff, you could do just grass and rock or sand, but I'm not about that. I'm about doing something a little cooler. I feel like there should be something kind of aquatic about these guys and their bases. So I continue to think about that. I'm starting to narrow in. I'm thinking about water effects from Vallejo, thinking about maybe tinting the ground with some blues and greens the way I think uh, Ash at Guerrilla Wargaming did something like that. It looks really good. So I'm almost there. I'm getting there. Sidebar, while we're talking about bases, don't paint half the rim of your base pink or red or blue. I understand sometimes there are squads and you want to keep the squads separate in your head and you want to be able to look at the table and know who's who. But after all the work you've put into painting your models, when you do that, all people see are your painted rims. That is so distracting to the eye and so distracting when a person looks at your force. It's just pulling every th all that effort you put into painting them and making them look great. The eye goes down and it looks at this fuchsia rim you painted on the front. There are other ways to mark your squads. Just put a little tick mark on the back. I mean, it's not like they're not hidden amongst, you know, a million blades of grass. They're sitting on the table right in front of you. You can look for a little marker on the back, even in a very subtle shade. I am super off to topic right now. Let's get back to it. Number four is do you need to do sub-assemblies? I'll be honest, I don't like sub-assemblies personally, but they're kind of a necessary evil sometimes. I just try to avoid it, but I do use them sometimes, especially when it comes to complex vehicles and things like that, or larger models where there's pieces that are quite different color perhaps, and you don't want to get some paint on the wrong part, whatever. As you can see from this guy, from the Eidenith Deepkin, I'm not super worried about a model covering up another part you know, one part of a model covering another part of a model. You can see that I've got that octopus already assembled all over that guy. That's just because for me, I've got the brush control to work around that these days. I don't, I don't really struggle with that. And I try not to paint things that people can't see. Usually I'm painting for gaming and, or really nice gaming and not for display or contest. But you're asking yourself this now before you assemble the models, before you assemble and prime the models. Because if you find out, oh man, I glued those giant guns in front of everybody and I'm really gonna have a hard time with that, you wanna figure that out before you get to assembling. Number five, super compelling topic, and it's all about how are you gonna prime your models. There's a whole bunch of different considerations here. As you can see, I primed my guy from Eidenith Deepkin white, but I hadn't answered my other questions first. So here I am a couple days later, thinking I want to use some darker colors and I've already got this guy primed white and now I'm like do I prime black over the white and I'm having a hard time. Depending on what kind of force you're doing if you're about to paint an ultramarine army maybe you're going to prime them all blue using like a GW or army painters uh, colored primer. Maybe you're going to do the the du rigueur. Is that, did I use that right? It's really popular right now to use zenithal priming where it's like you start with a black primer and then you prime white over top to create the highlights and things like that and create lighter colors on top. I do it sometimes, not, not that often. Are you gonna apply your primer? Do you have an airbrush? Do you like to brush primer on or do you find that kind of challenging, boring? Is it nice outside? Can you spray primer? Those things all need to be answered before you can get to your project as well. It even comes down to types of primer in the sense of some primers are glossy, so you can get a glossy black primer, which is actually kind of useful if you're trying to do a really shiny type of metallic effect, things like chrome and whatnot. Most of the time you're gonna prime in a matte kind of color, matte black, matte white, but again, it's something you wanna ask yourself before you get started. So, fellow hobbyists, are there other questions that I missed? I'm pretty sure there are. If you can think of any that would benefit everyone watching here and everyone that's gonna read the comments, comment below and let people know what should they consider other than the th five things that I listed here today uh, before they dive into a project. That's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, sharing, and clicking like, and we'll see you next time.